Hello, I'm Trisha Kindleman. You're watching CBC News Network. It's been another deadly night of bombing in Gaza, as Israel acts on its threat to intensify the war against Hamas. The Israeli Air Force says it hit 100 militant targets, destroying tunnels and other infrastructure. The airstrikes were carried out in several communities, and the Hamas-run health ministry is reporting multiple deaths. Israel's prime minister is refusing to give an end date on the conflict, even suggesting it could drag on for some time. Journalist Trent Murray has more from Tel Aviv. Flanked by heavy security, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made a visit to the combat zone, speaking to IDF troops on the ground. It was there that he told them that this war is not close to being over. He thanked them for their service to Israel and he told them, quote, do not stop. It comes as the IDF signals it's going to continue to expand its operations within the besieged strip home to roughly 2 million people. We understand they have now largely uh, gained operational control of northern Gaza and they are issuing further evacuation orders for people to move south. But even on the ground in the south, aid agencies say there is simply nowhere safe for those civilians to go as heavy airstrikes have been reported around the southern areas of Khan Yunus and Rafah. We've been talking for many weeks now about concerns that this conflict could spread wider in the Mideast. Uh, Iran now is talking about retaliation following that Israeli strike on one of its commanders. Tell us more about what you're hearing around that concern. Well, that's right. I mean, many diplomats in this region have been warning uh, of exactly what we are starting to see, that this arena uh, of the conflict just continues to expand. The latest involving an airstrike in the Syrian capital, Damascus, over the border, uh, a strike in which a senior commander of the Iran Revolutionary Guard was killed. He is Brigadier General Razi Musavi. Now, the Israelis say he was instrumental for transferring weapons from Iran to uh, militia, militia groups, including Hezbollah in Lebanon and fighters in Syria. But while that airstrike took place and the Iranians are vowing revenge, we also have seen airstrikes in Iraq, the US striking what they say were Iranian-backed militias in response to a drone attack at Erbil Air Base in which three US soldiers were injured. One of them, we understand, is in a critical condition. Uh, right now, many uh, officials here in Israel say what links all of these different incidents is Iran uh, and its many militias and proxies within the region. Right now, Tehran is saying that uh, Tel Aviv will pay a very heavy price for its actions in Damascus. That's journalist Trent Murray in Tel Aviv. <laughs> We've been hearing a lot lately about the extremely high risk of famine that people in Gaza are facing. Clean drinking water is also in short supply. These are pictures from Gaza's biggest refugee camp, where infrastructure has been destroyed or damaged in a series of major airstrikes. The UN estimates 95% of the population are unable to access sufficient water each day.